Let's continue our discussion with the endocrine system and let's compare it to the nervous system. Remember that these two systems here are the controlling systems of the body. In many places, they can't be separated. Like if you look at things like the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus in the brain, they are endocrine, but they're also nervous system. So these two systems are definitely working together in many ways. Now, if you look at how the nervous system monitors the body, it knows what's going on to maintain homeostasis. It works by what's called the frequency modulated system, the good old FM system. Anytime you hear frequency, think about how often something occurs in a unit of time. It doesn't matter if you seconds, minutes, years, wouldn't matter. So when you talk about frequency, how often it happens, the brain knows that different frequencies mean different things to it. Remember that action potentials, so what we call electric signals in the body, are of the same strength and intensity. So the brain can't look at different strengths of electric signals. It has to look at frequency, how often they're being generated. Now let's look at an example of this. Think about how does your brain know what your blood pressure is. You'll see in future chapters that there are sensory receptors in some of the big important arteries of the body, some of the major ones, like the aorta and internal carotids. And these baroreceptors, as they're called, are stretch or pressure receptors, right? Barrow means pressure in Latin. What they're actually detecting is how much an artery wall is being stretched. Now let's see how this works. Let's say you're sitting, you're not really doing much, nothing physical. Your heart's not pushing a lot of blood into those arteries, so they only get stretched a small amount. And if they're only stretched a small amount, <clears throat> they send electric signals, action potentials back to your brain infrequently. So your brain knows that a low frequency from those receptors means low pressure. But let's say you get up and you start to run and your heart pushes a whole lot more blood into those arteries. Since they're elastic, they'll stretch a lot more. And the more they stretch, the more often they send action potentials back to the brain. So the brain knows that high frequency from those receptors means high pressure. And of course, you've got lots of frequencies in between. So that's how your brain is always monitoring your blood pressure. Doesn't really know what the pressure is, but by changing the pressure, you change the size of the artery because it stretches more or less. The sensory receptors called baroreceptors detect that. And of course, the more they stretch, the more often they send electric signals back to your brain. So it doesn't really know what the pressure is, but it is monitoring the frequency. And the frequency is what tells it the pressure. Now, if you look at the endocrine system, it works by this AM or amplitude modulated system. This has nothing to do with frequencies here. When you hear amplitude, you think quantity. It's all about the quantity of the hormone when it comes to the endocrine system. It makes sense that just a small amount of hormone would give a weak response and a large amount of it would give a strong one. Just like with drugs, if someone takes a little bit of it, they get a weak response in the body. Somebody takes a large amount of it, they're gonna get a much stronger response. So if we look at these two pictures here, let's say this is our FM system up here and this is our AM down here at the bottom. If you look at the FM system, each one of these lines represents an action potential. Notice how they come up to the same point. Because remember, action potentials work by the all or none principle meaning you either get one or you don't. So the brain can't look at weak or strong action potentials. It has to look at frequency of them, how often they're being generated. And notice how they're spread out over here on the left. Let's say this is like one action potential being generated per second. The brain sees a low frequency from those baroreceptors. It knows pressure is low. But say they start to get generated much more often, Say this is three or four action potentials per second. The brain knows that a higher frequency from those baroreceptors means higher pressure. And of course, you'd have lots of frequencies in between telling the brain what your blood pressure is. Let's say this down here is the AM system. Remember, that's how your endocrine works, and it's all about quantity. A small amount of chemical like a hormone is present. There'll be a weak response in the body. There's more up to a large amount, you get a stronger response. So the quantity of the chemical determines the strength of the response when it comes to the AM system. Let's also look at how chemical signals are classified in the body. 
we got six major categories, one of them being autocrine. Autocrine chemical signals are always secreted into the environment around the cell, which are producing them, and they don't travel far. That's what's meant by local. Insane means they only work on the same cell type that released them. Like maybe it was an epithelial cell, or maybe it was just a neuron, something such as that. But the key words are local and same. Chemicals don't travel far, only affect the same cell type that released them. Paracrine, here the chemicals are still local, but now they work on a different cell type than the one that released them. So local and different with a paracrine. Then you get into hormones. These chemicals go into the blood. There's nothing local about these at all. So that's a completely different category. Hormones have to go into the blood and travel some distance to whatever it is their target tissue is. Then we have neurohormones. Now these are just like hormones that have to go in the blood, but they must be made by a neuron. So if a neuron is releasing a chemical into the blood, call it a neurohormone. If it was any other cell type, just call it hormone. Then we've got neurotransmitters. These chemicals are released into the synapses. There's microscopic tiny gaps in between these neurons. Lots of this going on inside the central nervous system. So these aren't going into the blood. These are crossing those synapses, allowing communication with neurons. And then lastly, there's the pheromones. These chemical signals here are released into the environment. They don't even affect the physiology of the individual that produced them but they can affect the physiology of others in the environment around them. So those are some very unusual chemicals there. So here we're looking at how these two systems are monitoring and controlling the body through that AM and FM system. Again, these two systems work together. The nervous system actually uses action potentials and chemical signals. But of course, when it comes to the endocrine system, it uses chemical signals that we call hormones. Ligands is just a more general term for chemical signals in the body. So we've looked over those examples there. Again, the endocrine just uses the chemical, works by the amplitude. Again, a small amount of a chemical gives a weak response. A large amount gives a much bigger response. So we're going to look at all these chemical signals in much more detail as we get to each one of the glands and the major hormones they produce. If you want to read more on this, you can buy my study guides. There are two of them, one and two, off of Amazon.com. I've got the links here. Make sure you get the one that you need for your particular title and body system. These books were written for 200 level, two part anatomy college courses. So notice how the anatomy two covers endocrine and so on. You can read on all that. And again, they're available at Amazon.